This is Dan Connolly with BaltimoreBaseball.com and we're doing our very first Know Your O's uh, segment here, a video hopefully we're doing every couple weeks or so. And today's guinea pig is Zach Britton, closed with Baltimore Orioles. Thanks, Brett. Uh, Zach, I appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. Thanks for having me. Uh, we're just going to kind of ask you just a couple different questions and kind of get a feel of you. And I, since we're a couple days uh, removed from opening day, I kind of want to get your sense of your major league debut. What was going through in your mind, and what was that like for you? A lot of build up, obviously. Uh, I got called up the day before, so I got to watch a whole game before I made my debut. Uh, but the whole process, I think, before the game, it was a day game, so I didn't have all day to sit there and think about it. But uh, I got to the field early. And I think just walking out to the bullpen before my warm-up kind of hit me a little bit. Uh, had been to Tampa, that's where I made my debut. Uh, before, was with my parents, I think I was in Florida playing a baseball tournament when I was younger. Had gone to a game there, so it was kind of cool, a little surreal, actually pitching a game there. Uh, but once I really got in the game and stuff like that, it was everything kind of calmed down. It was just like pitching another game. Uh, and then obviously after it was all done, kind of another moment to kind of take it all in again. Was there any welcome to the bigs moment for you at all, whether a good one or a bad one? Was there something that you thought, man, I'm not in Dewey anymore? <laughs> um, I mean, there was, I guess, a few. Uh, I'm trying to think of my first spring training start against the Yankees. They brought their A squad to Sarasota. I got to face everybody, so I didn't really have a moment, you know, in the big leagues per se of that. I want to say maybe the first home run I gave up. <laughs> I always talk to, I always tell Dom Chidi about it. I think it was Travis Hafner hit a, a change if I threw him out. And I was like, wow, the ball flies a lot more in the big leagues than it does in the minors. <laughs> um, was there any veterans that kind of took care of you when you came up? I mean, you came up and there was a lot of young guys. It was a pretty right. young team. But was there anybody who kind of showed you the way a little bit? Yeah, you know, we had a lot of young guys. Actually, the older guy, I mean, like Derek Lee always talked to me because he was here for a little while. Uh, he talked to me a lot in spring training and talked to me a lot during the season and always wanted me to go out with him and, and get a bite to eat when we were in different cities. Uh, and I wouldn't say necessarily he was taking me under his wing, but he was just kind of getting me accustomed to everything in the big leagues and just being a nice guy. He was a good teammate. Did you buy your own first suit? Uh, I didn't. Uh, Mike Gonzalez actually bought me two suits. Um, he was doing that with all the rookies that he <laughs> He probably spent a lot of money because we had a lot of rookies that year. So uh, Mike took good care of me and... Uh, Derek Lee was a great job. Like I said, everyone else in that rotation, I had kind of come up to the minors leagues with, so it wasn't. We were all kind of learning at the same time. Did you always want to be a baseball player? I mean, was there other things in sports? I mean, I know you, you know, both in California and Texas, your brother was a baseball player. Um, actually, both brothers, I guess, were baseball right. players. <clears throat> um, was that kind of the always the aspiration? Yeah, I think that was the ultimate goal. Uh, my dad was in the military. He served in the army, and um, that was something that interested me too but obviously my mom didn't want that. Uh, but yeah, baseball is kind of the first love, I guess. And uh, if I hadn't played baseball, you know, my other interest was, was leaning towards the military law enforcement, something along those lines, because I had an uncle that was a police officer. My oldest brother's a police officer now, and uh, my dad served in the military. So I guess you kind of do, you know, what you've grown up in, you know, what your father does, I guess, to an extent. He wasn't in the military when I was born, but um, obviously looking through all of his, his books and all his uh, uniforms and all like that was something that uh, interested me at the time. Speaking of your father, your father had an influence on something that a lot of Orioles fans know about now, and that's your walk-in music in ACDC. Um, tell me how the whole ACDC thing and you walking around your uh, your, <laughs> your house as a child uh, singing ACDC happened. Yeah, we got, my dad has some funny videos of me walking around in the diaper listening to that with ACDC playing in the background. Uh, but the first times I can actually remember, my dad used to collect old uh, American muscle cars. And to be fixing up in the garage, we had this. Uh, we had a pretty big property in California, and he had this um, detached, like three, four car garage. And he kept all these in. He used to work on them, and I could hear, you know, right when he would start working on those cars, ACDC was coming on, blaring through the garage. So I'd, I'd go in there with my brothers, you know, not really help. There wasn't a whole lot we could do, but we'd sit there and watch him fix up these old cars. And ACDC was always uh, blaring, and uh, my mom thought it was a terrible influence at the time on us, but it, it always stuck with me. So. Uh, I felt like if when I had the chance to pick a walkout song, it'd be cool because the few times my dad comes, you know, if he gets to see me pitch, I think it'd be pretty cool for him to see me working, playing ACDC, you know, it kind of, you know, flip sides a little bit. Um, now, speaking of fatherhood, um, that's something you've entered into recently. Um, how's that experience been with Xander? It's been great. Um, I think at first you were kind of nervous. You didn't know what to expect, but it's been great. Um, 
I think it changes you right away. And the things that you really care about and are passionate about change over time when you become a father. It's crazy to see how um, he develops his skills and the things you got to be careful because he's mimicking the things that you do. So it's been great. He's gotten big, extremely fast. And everyone I talked to said, yeah, it's going to go even quicker too. But it's been great. It's been tough to balance, obviously, the, you know, your job, which takes you away a lot with you know, wanting to be a dad and be there for everything. Yeah, we, we bought a home in Sarasota. That way I could be home more often. You know, you're there in the off season and then you're there for spring training. So got to spend a lot of time with him. And yeah, obviously during the season, it's tough. Coming to the field early, even when you're home and then obviously going on the road, he's not going to be able to go with me everywhere. Um, so you try to get it in when you can. It's, you know, with the time I do have it, I'll make sure kind of put the phone away a little bit and you know play with him and because he's getting at the age now where he knows I'm I'm gone and so when I come home it's cool he'll run up to me and give me a hug and I think that if anything that that pulls at you a little bit more too when you're gone all the time and you really start to miss him. How old is he now? He's 18 months 18 months so uh, just at the age now to where I think he's processing a lot more than than we even think me and my wife but uh, he definitely knows when I'm gone he always stands by the window always me off. Now and besides parenting and pitching what kind of things do you like to do what else do you do um, you know, for your, on your free time. You know, I'm big, like, spend time with my family. Obviously, we don't get to do that. Uh, and enjoy going up to the mountains. Well, so now we have a home up in the mountains in Nevada. Get to go there. As long as we don't get snowed in and miss fan fest. But uh, that's been great. I uh, was able to um, go hunting again this off season. I hadn't done that in a while with Tillman. Uh, when we got down to Florida, so I got to spend time with him. And uh, we actually brought Miguel Gonzalez, which, yeah, was, cool. which was funny. Yeah. But... Um, Tillman, you know, gotten to do that, and that just kind of gets you away from everything for a while, kind of relax out there. Now, as far as best friends in baseball, I mean, you were close with with Chen, with Gonzalez, mm -hmm. with Tillman. Are those pretty much the guys that you, you know, pretty much have kind of grown up with and consider your, your closest friends? Yeah, and, you know, Brian Mattis, too, Brian I played with him, and, and Caleb Joseph, played with him in the minors. So I would consider those guys the guys I spent a lot of time with. I spent a lot of time with Tillman, a lot of time with Mattis. Uh, I think... Uh, you know, obviously Caleb's a new dad too, so getting to spend time with those guys. But Miguel, yeah, Miguel was the guy I spent most of my time with in California when we had homes there. We lived right, pretty much right down the street, and then we both bought homes in Sarasota with, with Chris. So uh, we definitely spent a lot of time together. I'm sure we will too in the offseason. Any hidden talents from Zach Britton besides the bowling ball sinker? I mean, uh, hidden talents, I wouldn't say, maybe not a hidden talent, but. I think the one thing people find fascinating is I do more things right-handed. So I actually throw football right-handed, shoot a basketball right-handed. The only thing I do left-handed is throw baseball and, and right. So kind of weird in that aspect. I don't know what my dad was doing. Brady Anderson always jokes with me. He's like, I don't know what your dad was up to, but it worked out. But he's like, I always want to talk to him. and go, why is he throwing everything right-handed except for baseball? That's so cool. who knows? That's pretty funny. Um, what about around here? Is there anything you'd like to do in Baltimore? And is there like a certain restaurant you like to go to? And what would you order at a place like that? Um, you know, we don't get to go out too much here, but uh, breakfast, I like to go to Spoons. And uh, just about anything on the menu that they got is, is really good. So when I bring, when I have family in town, I like to bring them there. If we have time to grab a lunch, you know, every burger is always a cool spot to bring people. But um, if you have the chance, you know, any crab cakes around here, uh, there's a few good places. Who's the uh, goofiest teammate you have? It's got to be a, bull, I mean, gotta be a like, bullpen guy, right? Well, I would say like TJ and Caleb, funniest guys, goofiest guys. Caleb's more goofy than TJ. TJ's funny um, and goofy at the same time. But Caleb's definitely the goofiest teammate that we got. Um, <laughs> but it's good to have those guys, especially that he's a catcher. You can keep them loose. How much fun is it being in the bullpen with guys like Darren and TJ and, and those guys? Yeah, it's great. It was something that I didn't, I didn't know what to expect when I moved down to the bullpen a few years ago. So now that... You know, I get to experience that and be down there. It, it changed your whole uh, thought process on like the bullpen. And when I was a starter, you didn't pay a whole lot of attention to it. And I don't know, it's not being a bad teammate. It's just you focus so much on you know what you did as a starter, and you didn't realize what's going on down the bullpen during the game. And I guess if you did, you'd think it was pretty funny. But um, it's been great. I've really enjoyed it. And, and for me personally, it's been obviously uh, a good thing for my career. And, uh, Got to form new friendships down there, and obviously having Don, Don Chia down there too. He's like a little kid, so he uh, he keeps us online when he needs to be. But it's good to have him down there too because he understands the personalities and he manages that group really well. Yeah, well, that's awesome. It's Zach Britton, closer with the Baltimore Orioles, with the disembodied voice of Dan Connolly, <laughs> and uh, on BaltimoreBaseball.com. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks, Dan.